Uh, hey guys, what's up? Um, my assignment was on uh, Ralph Peer. Um, for those of you guys who don't know who Ralph Peer is, he is a record producer. Um, he's a very successful businessman, um, obviously an A&R guy, and he, um, because of these qualities that I'm listening, um, those are what partially what makes him a great A&R guy. Um, and he's also a great artist manager, um, music publisher, and I mean, and going back to recording, he's, I mean, he's a pioneer in recording. Um, and what I mean by that is he gave a voice to um, uh, the communities who weren't, uh, couldn't be heard on the radio. So for instance, um, poor communities in the South, like, um, well, the hillbillies was what they were called, and, uh, and black communities. Um, and that's where the term race music comes from. Um, and that's black music recorded by black artists and it's music um, specifically marketed towards black audiences. Um, uh, before Ralph Peer came along, and I don't mean before he was alive, but before he came into prominence and changed the game, um, race music and country music were not a thing. Uh, they were not uh, tangibly um, established as a genre. Um, before then, on the radio, um, people only could hear um, like European opera um, and very traditional old, old music. That's all what that was on the radio. Um, and Ralph Peer, uh, where he comes in is, so he grew up in a household of musicians and his dad was in uh, the music business. Um, so that's definitely how his inspiration, his interest for the music business um, definitely was uh, born, with, where, born in that environment. Um, and uh, and Pierre, he worked for the Columbia Phonograph Company, um, and uh, and then later for OK Records. And he sold, well, he he took old records and then he re-recorded them in so many different languages, like Chinese, Lithuanian, um, Italian, Russian, uh, and basically so that um, everybody could listen to music in their own language. And that was that was monumental. I mean, that's never been done before. Um, and I think. I think that's kind of symbolic for his whole career because um, the fact that he had the desire to um, implement diversity in popular music is, is crucial um, and life-changing. Uh, without Ralph Peer, I mean, really, we, I, we wouldn't be able to hear America listen to itself for the first time. That's a common uh, coin of phrase. Um, so, uh... So the recognizing and developing talent part, um, he is known for recognizing the talents from uh, the famous Carter family and um, Jimmy Rogers. Um, Jimmy Rogers is known for being the father of country music and the Carter family, while well, they're legends and their careers spanned um, for multiple decades and they're still being talked about today. Jimmy Rogers, not so much. Um, and I think mainly because his career is so short. Um, he had a lot of health problems and died at a very young age. Um, but um, Jimmy Rogers is one of the first um, uh, people that Pierce signed. Um, well, before I get into that, let's uh, let me talk about how he got interested in country music. So um, he was in, uh, I believe it was, yeah, it was Bristol, Tennessee. He went there um, for basically like an assignment, like for um, for Victor Records when he was working there. He worked there after he uh, left. Okay. Um, and he saw and heard uh, different artists like um, Fiddle and John Carson was like one of the first and more recognizable artists uh, in the South. Um, he became famous through radio and he was a hillbilly artist. And so Piers, uh, he heard that and he thought, okay, wow, that's, um, I'm not super into it, but obviously it's getting a lot of attention. Um, and it was in uh, his, song or his record the old hen cackled and the roosters going to crow and the little old log cabin in the lane those are the first two records uh that were money making um country music records um so pierce like he Pierre quickly tapped onto that and he decided to look for more artists in the country music genre as well as race music uh, and race music he discovered mamie smith uh so the largest um race music star at the time was uh, Bessie Smith. Um, she was a big star and he 
when he heard Mamie, he thought, okay, this girl's super cool, um, and she could be as big as Bessie Smith. Um, so he signed her, and her first record, Crazy Blues, sold 75,000 copies in its first month. That's insane. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I'm, while that is insane, I can see how it uh, got the numbers that it did, because again, like Ralph Peer gave a voice to the black community, well, in, in their music. Um, they didn't have that before, so this was this was huge. Someone, a, a black artist, getting signed, getting signed. Um, and let's see here. Uh, okay, so then he traveled on to Bristol, and that's where he discovered Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family. Um, and one of the things that made him a, an excellent A and R A and R guy is through his management, his ability to seek out unknown talent. Um, Jimmy Rogers, were, he was just, he was homeless. Um, and he was just performing on the streets and in local clubs and um, he just wasn't doing that well, but he was looking for any way to get into the industry. And uh, he met Pierre and um, Pierre uh, recognized something in Rogers that was significant and that was um, uh, likable and money-making, um, very attainable with making money. Um, and, uh, also he recognized how much, um, Rogers was, like, how, how much work ethic he had, his, uh, and, uh, so the two, they developed a very close relationship, um, and, uh, Rogers was, I mean, he sold, um, over a million, uh, well, he made over, hold on, I can't remember what I read, um, hmm. I think that was like the first million uh, units sold for an artist was with Rogers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then with the Carter family, uh, Pierre took a huge risk with them. Um, well, at least I, I think he did. So the Carter family was um, particularly with uh, the lead, uh, the lead singer, the lead performer, um, Laura Carter. She was a very independent woman, um, and I think, and that's very untraditional. Um, especially for that time and especially being a Christian woman it's very it's uh, yeah that's not normal at all um, and I think having her as a lead performer in the Carter family I think that was a risk in itself just because you know it would cause a lot of controversy and things like that however um, Pierre uh, and the uh, genius that he is he was able to market them um, with that kind of independent spunk but also uh, as a like morally good and a conservative group, um, so to appeal to all of the South, um, but also to appeal to women, um, and uh, a bit uh, Pierre. I mean, I think like one of the most important things though is um, just his knack for finding talent um, and knowing um, or understanding the importance um, between like the artist and the repertoire. So yeah, and art knowing um like what songs work for them um and you know completing a career path for them um was huge i mean he did everything i mean he managed them he recorded them um i mean yeah he he did everything he scouted them um he toured with them he did all of it you know he watched their careers you know expand out and grow um and uh, and I think with all those years, by working on the South, you really begin to grow, uh, grow to understand the country music and race music marketplace and its people um, and what they want, uh, not to mention his uh, past experience in his music career with uh, at um, Columbia and uh, OK and, and Victor, you know. Um, I think he really understood the music business, but he was also just very innovative and he took so many risks that no one else was willing to do. Um, I mean, taking a risk in the, in the black music business is, is huge, um, and especially with how segregated it was at the time, and he was so successful with it, and black musicians and black songwriters and publishers are so monumental and um, prominent um, and groundbreaking for the entire music industry. Um, I could go on about Ralph Peer, um, but that would make, I'm already over time, so I'm going to stop now, but uh, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you learned a lot about Ralph Peer, and I hope that you uh, now respect him a lot more than you did before, just like I do, so 
Anyway, thanks.